Good day everyone! For today's video, we are going to put focus on carbon compounds which is covered by Quarter 2, Module 4 of Science 9. So let's learn and have fun! Yung topic natin ngayon is under this learning competency. So we will try to explain how the structure of the carbon atom affects the type of bonds it forms. Specifically, yung video natin would help you Unang una, understand organic compounds, recognize the uses and properties of common organic compounds, and lastly, describe how carbon atoms able to form many organic compounds related to their properties. So let's have a quick look on the properties of carbon. Do you know what is carbon? Ano ba yung kanyang mga katangian? Unang una, yung carbon belongs to the group 4 of the periodic table. So, ibig sabihin, since nasa group, uh, group 4 siya, meron siyang apat na electrons on its outermost orbit or meron siyang valence electron na apat. And, carbon is also a non-metal. So, gaano ba ka-importante yung carbon? Alam nyo ba na yung carbon is the backbone of biological molecules or ito yung tinatawag na macromolecules? Sa sobrang importante ng carbon, lahat ng living organisms are made up of chemicals based mostly on the element carbon. So without the element carbon, almost all of the living organisms on earth would cease to exist. So let's talk about organic chemistry. So yung organic chemistry, ito yung pag-aaral about carbon compounds. Yung carbon compounds can form diverse molecules by bonding to four other atoms. Carbon compounds can range from simple molecules to complex ones because carbon has four valence electrons and may form single, double, triple, or even quadruple bonds. Dahil sa unique characteristic of carbon, so as you can see, that the number of carbon compounds is larger than that of all other elements put together. Just imagine, because it has four valence electrons and it can form double, single, triple, or even quadruple uh, bonds, that is why most of the compounds merong carbon na nakahalo. So you might be wondering, bakit sobrang dami ng carbon compounds in nature? So yung unang rason, because carbon is chemically unique. Second reason is that only carbon atoms have the ability to combine with themselves to form long chains. Because of this, the bonding versatility of carbon allows it to form many diverse molecules including carbon skeletons such as methane, ethane, and ethylene. So ano nga ba yung sinasabing long chain? Yung long chain provides a convenient backbone of atoms to which other atoms can attach themselves in a variety of ways. So, such as the illustration provided. There are other examples on how carbon forms bonds. So, carbon may bond to itself forming carbon chains. Yung iba naman, carbon chains form the skeletons of most organic molecules and these carbon chains is pwedeng magbago or nag iba, -iba siya ng length and shape. Can you still remember ano nga uli yung rason kung bakit sobrang daming carbon compounds in nature? If you had answered that the electron configuration or yung valence electron of carbon gives it a compatibility with many different elements. Kaya si tinatawag na carbon is a unique element. This time, let's talk about allotropes of carbon. In nature, pure carbon occur in two forms. Yung una, it forms into a diamond and the other one is it forms into a graphite. So here's a quick look on the structure of the allotropes of carbon, graphite and diamond. So ano nga ba yung ibig sabihin ng allotropes? Yung allotropes, these are elements na magkapareho yung kanilang chemical makeup pero magkaiba yung kanilang physical property. Yung diamond and graphite are two allotropes of carbon 
wherein magkaiba sila ng physical properties. Here's a quick comparison of the physical properties of diamond and graphite. So in terms of appearance, diamond is transparent, graphite is black and shiny, hardness, very hard yung diamond, soft and slippery to touch naman yung graphite. In terms of thermal conductivity, very poor yung diamond, moderate naman yung graphite. In terms of electrical conductivity, poor yung diamond, good conductor naman yung graphite. Density, of course, 3,510 and graphite which is 2,250 or mas magaan yung graphite. In terms naman of its uses, of course, definitely diamond is used for jewelry and drilling whereas graphite is used for dry cell, electric arc, and is also utilized as lubricant and ginagamit yung sa lapis. Based on the result kanina, as you can see, sobrang magkaiba talaga yung physical property ng diamond at saka ng graphite. So, paano naman nalaman ng mga scientists that both graphite and diamond have identical chemical nature? So, the results of these experiments answer this question. So, magkapareho yung chemical makeup ng graphite at diamond because on heating, diamond or graphite in the air, they burn completely to form carbon dioxide. And the other answer is that equal quantities of diamond and graphite when burned produces exactly the same amount of carbon dioxide. Hence, it is concluded that diamond and graphite are chemically identical or magkapareho sila ng chemical makeup. So what causes the difference? Kung identical yung chemical makeup ng diamond and graphite, so why is it? that the physical property of diamond and graphite are so different. So, yung reason dito is that the difference in the arrangement of carbon atoms in diamond and graphite. So, magkaiba yung kanilang arrangement of the carbon atoms that makes up diamond and graphite. So, although they are chemically identical, pero their physical appearance or their physical properties are very much different. Another reason that Carbon is abundant in nature is because of hydrocarbons. So, ano nga ba yung hydrocarbons? So, from the word itself, hydrocarbons are molecules consisting of only carbon and hydrogen. Hence, the name hydrocarbon. So, yung mga hydrocarbons are found in many of a cell's organic molecules such as a fat molecule and, of course, yung sa adipose cells. Here's an example of the simplest hydrocarbon. So one example of a simple hydrocarbon is the molecule called methane. So yung methane has four hydrogen atoms linked to one central atom of carbon. So the chemical formula of methane is CH4. Here is its structural formula. Okay. Another reason kung bakit sobrang dami ng carbon atoms or carbon molecules sa nature is because of isomerism. Ano nga ba yung tinatawag na isomerism? Pag sinabing isomers, ito yung mga molecules na magkakapareho yung kanilang molecular formula pero magkaiba yung kanilang different structures and properties. So mayroong tatlong klase ng isomers. Yung una is structural. Yung kaliwa is geometric. Yung ikatlo naman is enantiomers. Next reason as to why carbon is abundant in nature is because the ability of carbons to form functional groups. Ano nga ba yung tinatawag na functional groups? So yung functional groups, ito yung parts of molecules involved in chemical reactions. So they are the chemically reactive groups of atoms within an organic molecule. And this gives organic molecules distinctive chemical properties. So one example of functional groups are the estradiol in female lion and of course the testosterone or the uh, male hormone of a male lion. There are six functional groups that are important in the chemistry of life and this includes hydroxyl, carbonyl, carboxyl, amino, sulfhydryl, and phosphates. Here are some examples of important functional groups. So this includes yung alcohols, 
the ketones, the aldehydes, and carboxylic acids to include also acetone and acetic acid. Kung titingnan natin, all of these functional groups contains carbon on them. Now, let's proceed to the general classes of organic compounds. So, these are another reason kung bakit yung carbon is sinatawag na backbone of life. There are four macromolecules of life. Pag tinawag na macromolecules, these are polymers made by joining mini monomers or single unit. There are four main classes of biological molecules, namely carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. To start with, let us discuss carbohydrates. We already know that carbohydrates are energy-rich organic compounds made up of the elements carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. On the other hand naman, pag tinawag na simple carbohydrates, these are the simplest carbs are sugars, which are the glucose in our body. And complex carbohydrates, on the other hand, are polymers made up of smaller molecules that are simple carbs bonded to one another. Let's take a quick look on the general characteristics of carbohydrates. Ano nga ba yung katangian ng mga carbohydrates? We already know that yung carbohydrates contains carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Malalaman mo agad that these are examples of carbohydrates kasi yung ending niya is OSE. Alam natin na yung carbohydrates, these are animals' main energy source and carbs are born first in the body. Merong tatlong classification yung carbohydrates. Una, monosaccharides. Then, disaccharides. And the last one are polysaccharides. The next type of macromolecules is known as proteins. We already know that proteins are formed from smaller molecules called amino acids. Ano nga uli yung amino acids? These are monomers that is a building block of proteins. We already know that the main function of proteins in our body is that the body uses protein from food to build and repair body parts and to regulate cell activities. So here are the general characteristics of proteins. Everything you have to know about proteins. So yung building block of proteins, as we all know, are amino acids. Main function of protein is that it is essential to the structures and activities of life. Yung kanyang composition naman, it is made up of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, sulfur, and phosphorus. This makes up 50% of your dry weight. These are the examples of group of proteins, namely enzymes, structural proteins, contractile proteins, transport proteins, and of course, hormones. This time, let's proceed to lipids. Ano nga ba yung lipids? So, yung lipids, these are energy-rich compounds made up of carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen. Saan nga ba makikita or makukuha yung lipids? So, examples of lipids are yung mga taba, yung mga oils, waxes, and of course, cholesterol. So, gram for gram, mas malaki or twice as much yung pinuproduce na energy coming from lipids kesa dun sa carbohydrates. So, yung building block of lipids are known as fatty acids. Another example of lipids, as we all know, is cholesterol, which is a waxy lipid in animal cells. Here is a general information about lipids. As we all know, yung kanyang building block are fatty acids. Binubuo siya ng mostly carbon and hydrogen atom linked by nonpolar covalent bonds. So, ano ba yung function ng lipids sa ating body? So, this serves as energy storage for molecules. Uh, lipids are also insoluble in water. When we talk about insoluble, hindi siya natutunaw. So, saan ba makikita or ano ba yung examples ng lipids? So, this includes triglycerides, phospholipids, uh, steroids, waxes, oils, and fats. Now, there are two types of fats. The first one is saturated fats, meaning they are solid at room temperature. And you have also the unsaturated fats, where is or they are liquid at room temperature temperature. Now, let's proceed to the last type of macromolecules known as nucleic acids. Ano nga ba yung nucleic acids? So, when we talk about nucleic acids, these are very large organic molecules made up of carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen, and phosphorus. Meron siyang dalawang klase. 
and that includes DNA and RNA. So, yung nucleic acids, these are the elements that make up all living organisms such as carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, and sulfur. Here's a general idea on the properties or the characteristics of nucleic acids. Yung building blocks niya ay tinatawag na nucleotide. So, this includes DNA and RNA and its main function is to store and transmit genetic information. So, we all know that uh, DNA is called as the blueprint of life. So, DNA is just an acronym called dioxyribonucleic acid as well as RNA which means ribonucleic acid. So, this is a large macromolecules containing carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and phosphorus. This time, let us check how much you have learned from today's video. So, take organic compounds quiz challenge. So, take note, you may pause the video while answering and press play if you're done to check your answer. Here are examples of organic compounds. So this includes gasoline, ethanol, acetone, LPG, kerosene, or acetic acid. Your goal is to check whether it is used in beverage, food, antiseptic, fuel, or it is used as a cleaner. So you may pause the video while answering and just press play when you're done. So here are the correct answer. So as we all know, gasoline is used for fuel, ethanol is used as a beverage for antiseptic and fuel as well. Acetone on the other hand is used for as a cleaner, LPG as a fuel, kerosene as a fuel and cleaner, and acetic acid is used for food processing and of course as antiseptic. This time, Try to identify the uses and properties of the following organic compounds. Number one, gasoline, acetone, diesel, isopropyl alcohol, acetic acid, formalin, kerosene, agua oxinada, ethanol, and the last one would be LPG. So you may use or you may pause the video while answering and press play when you're done to check your answer. So, here are the correct answers. Did you get it all correct? If so, congratulations! So, that's it for today's video. I hope you have learned and have fun. Don't forget to click like, ring the bell, and most important of all, subscribe. Einstein Attics, out!